Okay, it is 11.20 right now, and that means I gotta do this in one take. All right, all right, all right, let's just go. So, when I procrastinate, I like to watch a lot of live videos on YouTube. And I also like to watch John Boy Media's baseball breakdowns on YouTube, where he hilariously examines these small moments in baseball. And I realized there should be something like this for live music, because when I look, all I find is a, a video essay about Queen's Live Aid performance. It's not quite what I want. Uh, I get a lot of, I get a lot of reaction videos, but I want more than just an initial reaction. Actually, what I want is something more like. Uh, what Vox and what a lot of other YouTubers do and which is just analyze music, but I want that for live performance. So I decided to try and make some, but as I made them, they transitioned more towards that one queen video. So this is what that presentation's about. It's about that progression. Um, the project was about pointing out the good and bad in all these uh, performances. I've just, point out anything that really points out that really that really catches my eye like or ears the music uh the lights the visuals and just anything really and what this basically means is i was using like other i was examining other people's works and expressing my own thoughts about them in a form of a video to make my videos i used y2mate to download videos off of youtube for visuals I recorded my own voice using voice memos and I put everything together with iMovie. So this is a pretty rudimentary setup and what this meant was that audio was never going to be all that great. But the bigger issue was that I'd have to deal with YouTube's copyright policy. And now YouTube has a poll in YouTube. If you get three of these red circles, these are copyright strikes. And if you get three of these, your accounts terminate, your accounts terminated. So that's something I'd have to really look out for. Fortunately, I only have copyright claims, which means I don't make any money off the videos. whoop de doo So my first video was about JLo's performance at the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, my favorite part of this video is actually me demonstrating her high five technique and just judging over how good it was. <laughs> <laughs> and you, but you can see a problem right here is that the uh, the filming orientation was inconsistent, and that's super annoying when you're watching it on your phone, and it just doesn't look that good in general. So, along with things I wasn't thinking about was uh, this script. I didn't have a script. It actually made my uh, dialogue very chaotic and a stuttering mess. Uh, as I said before, as I may, you may may not have said before, uh, John Boy Media was a big influence on making these videos, and I wanted something fun, but uh, he something similar to his, but he has this dry wit, which has a far less chaotic energy than mine, and but one thing I did take from him was uh, the fact that I didn't really use any background music and. I use and uh, there was one time though I did play the music and kept the music on as I was talking and that one music that one time the background in the, was too loud. Uh, fortunately, these were all easy solutions. So for my second video on Bad Bunny's performance at the Super Bowl halftime show, I talked. I not only uh, addressed all these issues, I also added a little background music and I talked about the differences between the live and studio versions of the songs that he was performing because uh, my previous indifference towards Bad Bunny as an artist changed because of this performance so that made me want to check out some of his music and when I talked about his music I uh, took influence from Todd in the Shadows right who's a music critic on YouTube I he has this uh, certain style of of audio visual timing that I sort of like passively remember and just used and just, just sort of try to replicate in my video. And uh, I also felt that my commentary was kind of on point during this whole thing. Uh, if like for the instance here, I said, uh, this is the bad bunny here was focusing his intensity into the mic, which I think is high grade BS, you know, but 
what wasn't very good was uh, my voice. It was kind of inconsistent. It started off kind of low energy and then it p- picked up in the second half. And I still feel like this, uh, this, this problem with inconsistent, this inconsistency is a problem that I still have, but, uh, the bigger, <laughs> but also one other thing I just hope never to do again is to, is miss a couple things. It's probably going to happen, but still, but like, cause like, if you look here, look at this dancer, look at her face. Oh my God. I, how do I miss that? And then we see the fact he's cupping the mic. You're, you're not supposed to cut the mic. It, it just sounds ugly. You, you shouldn't do that. And uh, now if we take a look down at the bottom left, we see this dancer whose face looks like she's just done with life. Like it's hilarious. I can't believe I missed it, man. And speaking of more things I missed in, I showed this video in the Keystone workshop and a lot of things, a couple of things I missed this one I found just by watching it again. My intros are horrible. All right. They're, they're very, they're short and they don't really like, they're not very like enticing. Uh, this is two re- There's two reasons behind this. Definitely. One is that I'm in, again, John boy media was a big, was an influence on this. His, their, his intros are also very short and, cons- and to the point, but because of his dry wit, it actually really works. And that's not what I have. So I can't, re- I had to like do something. I have to do something else. The other reasons, because I actually don't care for intros when I'm watching these videos, I kind of just zone out and then just tune back in once the video starts getting into what it's talking about. And, uh, that what really helps is having is knowing the format of these videos. And uh, one thing I didn't consider thing, uh, one thing Gabrielle pointed out was that I should, you know, make a, make a, a consistent format for this series of videos. And I was like, Oh yeah. And then, but the bigger thing that I had to consider was what Otis said in that he doesn't, he couldn't see what the purpose of these videos were, which honestly they were mostly just for fun. And if I wanted to like kind of BS a purpose, it would just be, you know, to find out what makes a good performance. But like, I didn't want to like, have to like throw that question into my video and I don't want to try to like fit it in there. So I just decided to change everything up, change the whole thing. So my third video, I decided to focus on the practice of using pre-recorded tracks and live music. I basically went from making reaction videos to video es- to video essays. And that changed the way I used performances in my video. I went from looking at one performance to referencing many of them, uh, to f- support my arguments for this, a question, a question that I, uh, that I asked was whether pre-recorded performances are good for live music. I said, I said, yes, from a purely entertainment perspective, because it's a win-win, it's a win-win situation for us. If we, if we don't know, then we get a good performance. If we do know, we can get some very entertaining content like Ashley Simpson here who got caught on SNL lip syncing and she just had to, she just had to walk around hung, hung to dry. She, it was some real office level cringe. Like it's me, some great content or better yet when an artist doesn't, when an artist refuses to lip sync and decide to just screw around on stage, like Iron Maiden does here when they actually just switch instruments. So, but the problem is I didn't state this question, nor did I answer it until the very end of the video. And this all came from the fact that my intros were still bad. Okay. That, that habit will die hard. That habit died hard. The intro was still like 30 seconds compared to every other the videos before were like 20 ish seconds. It, this still was just 30 seconds and it was, it was bad. It was still very bad. It was still very poorly executed. And what was more in more uh, frustrates me is the fact that my argument for why we shouldn't use pre-recorded music was incredibly weak, which is so weird. Mostly because I was trying not to, I was trying to uh, make another, I was trying to talk about music's, uh, how besides the fact that you should be playing music live during a live performance, uh, music has this ability, has, has a, 
music is able to form communities and such. And I was trying to, I was trying to say why pre-recorded tracks go against that sort of community building aspect. And it was just also very poorly executed. So all around the video, I feel like the execution was very, was, uh, very off. And so during spring break, I took, a, I took a break and then I also took my time just like trying to make my next video. I decided to just plan out really, really take a, like, this is actually just me procrastinating, but at the same time I was kind of just taking my time and planning out everything. And, uh, and I think it would, I think what came out of it was my best video yet, which was about audience participation and how we should go about integrating it into classical music. Now, I'm talking about classical music because uh, only really because I've been playing the viola for 12 years and I just feel like acknowledging my roots and such. But uh, I don't have the confidence to about talk to talk about classical music as I do talking about uh, regular rock and pop and hip hop. So I turned to my orchestra direct, my orchestra director from high school, who is a Peabody, who graduated from the Peabody Institute in double bass at Johns Hopkins, which is a great music school. And I basically just, he just answered all of my questions because I knew he would, because we're, we're pretty tight. I don't know. But basically, along with, but basically everything improved. I think everything took a nice step, a good step and all. And what really helped was this actually finally establishing the format of my series which was that at the end of my intro, I would name drop the name of this. I would name drop, not the joys of live music. It's now performance theory. I changed it because it wasn't it, because I was talking because this was all based off of music theory. Music theory is the examination is the study of the practices of music. And that is pretty literally what I'm doing with performances. So I decided to name it performance theory. Uh, then I would go and preview what I'm doing, what I'm going to talk about in the video, and then also why, as in, as in like, what is the question that I'm trying to answer by, do, by looking at this practice. And then I'd separate all these points with these title cards, such as this one up here, why do we do this? And in this question in particular, I actually also talked about music's communal, communal building, as, communal building, community building aspects. And this time I I quoted a book that I read last year, that I read last year in my, uh, in this music class that I took. And uh, this was, this exact slide right here was used in my video. And so, and this title card was also made in PowerPoint. So basically PowerPoint became another tool that I'm using in my videos. And to basically sum up everything, I went from making reaction videos that analyzed performances to making video essays that, uh, that really examined performance practices and tried to apply what I learned about them elsewhere. So obviously, this isn't the end of it all. Uh, really, this progression actually looks something more like this. Uh, I don't know where it's going to go next. Maybe it'll stay the same, but maybe it'll just still, I'll just keep going with video essays, but maybe I'll go back to reaction. Maybe I'll do something entirely different. But what I've learned so far is that I should, I have to really take care to make sure my videos are consistent in quality. And what'll help is to plan out, plan everything out and to take my time making them, which are all obvious things that I should have like, you know, just known, but I got to learn everything the hard way. So that's great. Uh, my current problems too. One of these are actually, these two are just only two of a bunch more I could also talk about, but we don't, but nah, we're just going to focus on these two for now. Uh, vocal delivery is something I'm going to have to just practice with and just be very careful when, while I'm doing so. And, but Audio quality, on the other hand, is a pretty quick is a pretty quick fix. I can get a better mic, and I can use uh, I can get other programs to help make some smoother transitions. In fact, actually, that that mic right there, the AT twenty twenty, that is the mic I'm using right now for this presentation. And for my next video, I'm gonna try to use Adobe Audition 
to make to make some very smoother transitions between the music that I play in the background from in my own voice and bringing that music in the background to the forefront whenever I feel like it. And my next video will actually be one of two. It'll actually be one of these two, and I don't know which one I'll do. I'm probably gonna do both, but I don't know what the order will be either. One is whether amplification is whether amplification will be good for classical music, as in whether the degrading whether the degra the degrading sound that's amplified is better for class is better for is better for classical music. And the other one is lighting and whether you sh and whether we should apply these the lighting practices we see the lighting effects we see on like rock pop and hip hop concerts into classical music because that'd be interesting see see a bunch of flashing lights well I don't know uh, check out the Nutcracker suites playing and this transition from reaction to essay was helped a lot by the fact that I was trying to decipher intent in both of them. Uh, I was speculating why the live version was different from the studio versions of songs before, and now I'm theorizing why performances do these certain practices. And so I hope my intentions behind my videos were as interesting as I think they were, and that you check out my videos. Thanks for, thank you for watching.